once again that our graduation rate is at an all-time high. Uh, that graduation rate, both for the four-year and five-year cohort graduation rate, continues to move up, and it's at the highest level ever in North Carolina. And we have come a long way since 2006 from a graduating rate of approximately 68%. We know that that's very important to our citizens, to our students, uh, as research shows, any student who does not graduate from high school makes a million dollar mistake. I'm also pleased that the graduation rate gaps have been closing among groups of students and we have seen significant improvements in graduation rates with our African American students, our Hispanic students, and economically disadvantaged students. In fact, the American Indian and Hispanic students actually have had the highest increases since 2006 30.9% for our American Indian students and 27.8% for our Hispanic students. We also see that our students continue to move up overall, especially in mathematics and science. And in reading, we have overall positive trends, but some variation at specific grade levels. And I want to congratulate the teachers and, the, and their students for continued focus and achievement against higher and more rigorous standards. And when you think about the A's through F school proficiency grades, North Carolina has fewer schools receiving D's and F grades this year, yay. And more than three-fourths of our students receive grades of C, B, or A plus NG. And you may wonder about the A plus NG. And that grade indicates that schools that earn an A grade and do not have any significant gaps among different student groups than the, national, than the state average. So that is our highest designation. And those are the three highlights. Uh, those three highlights point to the overall positive progress of school performance in North Carolina in 2016. And as usual, there is always more to do and there's always room to grow. But we are headed in the right direction, and I am extremely grateful to North Carolina educators and students for their hard work. So at this time, uh, Dr. Tammy Howard, who is director of our accountability systems, and I will be glad to take any questions. We also have with us Dr. Maria Petrie Martin, who is our chief academic and digital learning officer and Dr. Nancy Barber, who heads our work uh, with district and school transformation. Oh, and oh, by the way, did you hear Dr. Barber's announcement that Halifax County is no longer a, a low performing school? And that is great news for Halifax County, and that is a testament of the hard work of Halifax County, as well as our people who are in district and school transformation led by Dr. Nancy Barber. So. Dr. Atkinson, we're, we're in an era of numbers, test scores, uh, for parents, for taxpayers who look at all these scores, look at individual schools and look at the letter grade. Does that define a school or should they take more into consideration? The grades are just a snapshot and when you take a snapshot, you miss quite a bit. Uh, you miss the climate of the school. You miss the satisfaction of parents. You uh, miss other types of, of work that go into developing character of our students. Um, you miss the work of developing citizens. So parents in our community should take the grades as a snapshot, and it takes a lot more uh, work to look at the whole school and we encourage our parents to visit schools to see the climate to see what uh, teachers are doing after school to see what extracurricular activities to see the engagement of students in much work uh, we uh, look at expected growth and growth is really an indicator of student progress but that's also a snapshot I have two questions. So you mentioned the graduation rate uh, in 2006, which was 68%. Um, how proud are you that it jumped nearly 20%? And what kind of work went into that kind of height? Okay. Well, if I could do a black backflip about the graduation rate, I would do that. 
Um, and here are some of the things happening that have contributed to our having a higher graduation rate since uh, our, our 2006 of the 68%. Number one, school districts and schools have been focusing on uh, graduation rate. They have made concerted efforts to provide the support services necessary to address some of the needs of our students. Two, we have many choices within our public schools today, such as our career academies and so, uh, or our arts academies. So students have more choices to be able to learn the standards uh, and, to, in, and to make sure that they have engagement. Uh, another is that our work with school and district transformation when you look at the graduation rates of where we have worked uh, in schools very closely through Dr. Barber's staff, you will see that we've seen tremendous increases in those school districts. And of course, that contributes to the overall graduation rate. Another is the publicity about how important it is to, to graduate from high school. And we try to make sure that our students get the message, don't make a million dollar mistake. And just earlier, you had also said, you know, there's more to do and room to grow. So what is the focus now? I mean, it's great that you brought the rate up, but the work needs to continue. Yes. Well, as it, re as it relates to the graduation rate, we want a nearly 100% graduation rate. And I say nearly 100% because all of our students will not be graduating with a diploma. We have students who have special needs and who will be getting certificates or other types of credentials, not the high school diploma. So that's why I say nearly 100%. I'm sorry, one more question. Can you tell me where the state falls in the national average? Well, the national average um, information lags for about a, a year, but we are in the middle of the states now. You know, Dr. Atkinson, if there's a weakness in this report, it would seem to be passing rates in third and fourth grade reading which to me seems kind of contradictory since there's been this huge focus on early reading. What's going on? Well, that is something that we are going to continue to determine what's going on. One of the challenges that we see is that we are having more and more students entering kindergarten without preschool education. And without quality preschool, then our schools have a lot more work to do to catch up students. A second uh, reason is that uh, we have turnover in our kindergarten through grade three. So there's always the professional development that needs to take place to help our teachers. Turnover of, of teachers. Yes, turnover of teachers. Another uh, challenge is that the General Assembly has been generous in providing money to have uh, reading summer camps, and they have expanded reading summer camps to other grades, I mean to lower grades. But we are seeing a trend of parents not taking advantage of those summer camps. And then one of the most detrimental uh, parts of, of reading achievement is that summer re reading loss. You know that students lose two and a half to three months of reading <coughs> progress every single summer if they uh, go home to no books. And so consequently, the calendar, the traditional calendar we have in North Carolina is not working for our children who need assistance in improving student achievement. Yes. Dr. Atkinson, um, uh, once again this year, um, the, the, the school performance rates are linked to often to wealth and poverty. Um, uh, high poverty schools often have lower school performance grades. Um, what do you say to people who are concerned about that trend continuing? First of all, I say that the A through F is just a snapshot. And you have to have much more conversation about what those schools are doing for children. And in impoverished schools across North Carolina, they have many more challenges and some of those schools need extra adults in the school. They need uh, social workers, they need school psychologists, they need nurses. 
And so we see that that is a great need uh, for some of our schools with high poverty level. So again, I would say for our schools receiving a D or F, I would encourage you to look at growth and to look at the resources that that school may have in comparison to other schools. Uh, we also know that with uh, supplements that some of our students, I mean some of our schools can attract uh, and retain teachers longer than some of our impoverished school districts where they do not have supplements to pay teachers. And so that's another factor. There are many factors going into why uh, we continue to have that trend of our schools with high poverty having lower grades. Yes, it appears that 87% um, of schools met the test participation requirements and the federal government requires that to be 95%. And I know um, our state received a warning letter from the federal government last year saying that needs to improve and it, it has not. Are you concerned that we could lose federal funding or something else could happen as a result of that? And I will call on Dr. Howard uh, while she's coming forward. Uh, with ESSA, uh, we are starting over in some respects, and there is a, an accountability measure dealing with participation, so I'll ask Dr. Howard to address that. Um, um, thank you for that question. So with that letter from the U.S. Department of Education, um, we agreed to take certain actions with schools that are not meeting that participation requirement. And so we have that system in place. Schools that miss a target two years in a row are labeled um, continually low participating, and schools that are three are um, then a focused participation school. And this enables us to identify which schools are missing those targets, which targets they are missing, and following up with those schools. Much of the work that um, Dr. Barber will do with her schools, she'll be looking to see if some of those schools have missed those participation targets. And key to this is, part of the process is in some situations, schools are required to notify parents with letters and they're also required to have action plans on what they're going to do, the steps they're going to take to improve that participation. So when we say 87.1% um, met those targets, that means they met all the targets for all students and then for all the subgroups. And so other schools are meeting some targets, but even if they just miss one, then they're not included in that 87.1%. So that's one thing to remember. Other questions? Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for covering the steady progress of North Carolina public schools. Uh, I will close by thanking our educators throughout North Carolina for the hard work that they did last year, and I know the hard work that they will be doing this coming year. So thank you for coming.